kids! I'm Uncle Mark. And I'm Auntie Janice. And we are back in the season of Ordinary Time, a time to learn and grow. And this week, we are going to do something different. That's right. We've been meeting some of you out there and also online. And you have shared with us how much you love the worship music and dance. You've also had a lot of questions about what worship is. Mm -hmm. So today, we're going to go on a short adventure to explore what praise and worship is. So, praise and worship is another form of prayer. We speak to Jesus through our song and movements. And during praise and worship, we sing praises to God, giving Him thanks for all His blessings, and we worship Him to give Him the honour and glory. And many of the songs we sing are inspired by the Word of God, the Bible. That's right. But you know, as Catholic Christians, the highest form of worship is... The Mass. At Mass, we come together as one family to worship God through the celebration of the Eucharist. So kids, don't forget to get your dad or mom to book your next Mass. And see you there! Oh yes, Mass is so important for us as Catholics. So Auntie Janice, when do we sing praise and worship songs? Well, when you can't go for Mass, I sometimes sing the song when I'm cooking or driving or when I'm feeling grateful and just want to tell God and thank Him for a wonderful day. Ah, I see. Well, for me then, when I'm feeling down or when I'm scared, I love to sing the song, My All in All, which reminds me that God is my strength. The song really makes me feel better. Mm, that's nice. Oh, and St. Augustine once said, He who sings prays twice. That's when we sing with all our heart, that is. So, Uncle Mark, are you ready for some praise and worship? I thought you'll never ask. And children, I invite you to stand up, give yourself some space to move, and join us by opening your palms and facing them upwards towards heaven. Just like how you would raise your hands to give your dad or mama a hug. And let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now children, repeat after me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for being here with us. With our families. With our families. With our friends. With our friends. And with our church. And with our church. Thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for taking care of us. And loving us so much. And loving us so much. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. And we want to take this time. And we want to take this time. To worship and praise you. To worship and praise you. And give you all the glory. And give you all the glory. Now, in Psalms 150, verse 6, it says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. We are living and breathing, moving beings with our whole being. Let's praise Jesus who loves us so much. you 
take, I take in you. You are my way, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Ways of mercy, ways of grace. Everywhere I look, I see your face. Your love has captured me. Oh, my God, this love, how can it be? Na, 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 You are our father and there is none like you. Yes, Lord. You are big, strong, and higher than any other. You are our healer and you are awesome in power. Jesus, you are so awesome. We want to worship you with all our hearts and in spirit and truth. And children, I would like you now to put your right hand on your chest, where your heart is, and feel your heartbeat. Our heartbeat reminds us of the Holy Spirit that is living within us. Jesus is present here with us. That's right. Now children, close your eyes. I want you to have a favorite image of Jesus standing in front of you. He could be laughing and playing with children. He could be the good shepherd caring for his sheep. Or perhaps he is healing someone 
who is unwell. Jesus, what a beautiful name. Every time we feel sad, lonely or afraid, we know we can call on your name. Sometimes we do the wrong things, but your love, your love is greater. Your love makes us one again with the Father. Now children, let's open our eyes slowly and continue to worship the Lord. Jesus for loving us. Children, repeat after me. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, our praise and worship doesn't end here. Think about how you can praise God and worship Him in your daily lives. Like giving thanks for your daily blessings and worshipping Him by showing love to others. Oh, and don't forget to join our Facebook page. We will be posting our worship songs there too. See you next week and remember, Jesus, Jesus loves you. you. Hi kids! Thank you for sharing your amazing artwork with us week after week on Little Faith Steps. 
The entries from our local and international friends are colorful and inspiring. We are always encouraged by your sharings and beautiful artwork. Keep them coming. For this week's activity, go to our Facebook page, Little Face Steps, like our page, and share your works in the comments section with us. We can't wait to see them. Now this week, take a video or a photo of you worshipping the Lord in song and post it on Little Face Steps. It is now time to set up your altar table and prepare for Holy Mass. Take a moment now to get these items and see you in a while. Oh, don't forget! to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag Catholic Mars at home. Let us now listen to what Auntie Estella has to share with us in one Mass minute. When Mars starts, you're going to see Father in a colour he hasn't worn in two months, green. If you recall the liturgical calendar, green signals that we've entered ordinary time. This may sound pretty boring, we aren't celebrating any of the big events in Jesus' life, like his birth, death, or resurrection. But you might recall that Jesus spent three years teaching and healing after he was baptized in the River Jordan. In ordinary time, we hear the stories of where Jesus went and what he did. He shared many secrets about the Kingdom of Heaven. He cured the sick and fed the hungry. He told us how to live our lives. And most importantly, He showed us how much God loves us. Ordinary time lets us spend these three years of Jesus' public ministry with Him to help us love Him more and more. Thank you, Auntie Estella. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, take a moment to be silent and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Holy Mass with children. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and to learn more about worshipping God with our singing and movements. There's nothing like giving God our hands and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together on the second Sunday in Ordinary Time, 17th January 2021. We offer up this Mass for all who are waiting to see and hear the goodness of God. Join us in singing the processional hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, and dear children in Christ. Today's reading invites us to accept Jesus in our lives. To accept Jesus in our lives. When we look in the Bible, whether it's Old Testament or the New Testament, we see God living amongst His people. 
How does Jesus come to us? He comes through the Eucharist, through the Word of God. When we accept Him, He stays with us. When we accept Him, He stays with us. Keeping this in mind, now let us pause for a moment and ask forgiveness from the Lord. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who govern all things both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Samuel. Samuel was lying in the sanctuary of the Lord, where the ark of God was. When the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, he answered. 
Here I am. Then he ran to Eli and said, "Here I am." Since you called me, Eli said, "I did not call. Go back and lie down." So he went and lay down. Once again, the Lord called, "Samuel, Samuel." Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, "Here I am." Since you called me, he replied, "I did not call you, my son. Go back and lie down." Samuel had as yet no knowledge of the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Once again, the Lord called the third time. He got up and went to Eli and said, "Here I am, since you called me." Eli then understood that it was the Lord who was calling the boy, and he said to Samuel, "Go and lie down, and if someone calls, say, 'Speak, Lord, your servant is listening.'" So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord then came and stood by, calling as he had done before. Samuel, Samuel, Samuel answered, "Speak, Lord, your servant is listening." Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, and let no word of his fall to the ground. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of Saint Paul to the Corinthians: The body is not meant for fornication; it is for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. God, who raised the Lord from the dead, will by His power raise us up too. You know surely that your bodies are members making up the body of Christ. Do you think I can take parts of Christ's body and join them to the body of a prostitute? Never, but anyone who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with Him. Keep away from fornication. 
all the other sins are committed outside the body. But to fornicate is to sin against your own body. Your body, you know, is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you since you received him from God. You are not your own property. You have been bought and paid for. That is why you should use your body for the glory of God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As John stood with two of his disciples, Jesus passed, and John stared hard at him and said, Look, there is the lamp of God. Hearing this, the two disciples followed Jesus. Jesus turned round, saw them following, and said, What do you want? They answered, Rabbi, which means, Teacher, where do you live? Come and see, he replied. So they went and saw where he lived, and stayed with him the rest of that day. It was about the tenth hour. One of these, two who became followers of Jesus after hearing what John had said, was Andrew the brother of Simon Peter. Early next morning, Andrew met his brother and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means the Christ. And he took Simon to Jesus. Jesus looked hard at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, meaning rock. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Once upon a time, it was very cold as winter was coming. All the birds had flown away to the warm south to wait for spring to return. But one little bird was left behind. The little bird's wing was broken, and so he couldn't fly away with his friends. The little bird didn't know what to do. And he was looking around, looking for a place where he could stay safe and warm. Then suddenly he saw the trees in the great forest. Perhaps these trees will keep me warm in the winter. He thought to himself and he so moved to the edge of the forest, hopping and fluttering because his wing was broken. The first tree he came to was a tall, slim, silver birch tree. The little bird asked to help. The birch tree replied, I have to take care of my own leaves all winter without looking after you too. Go away. Next, the little bird went to a great oak tree and asked to help. The oak tree replied, What a thing to ask! If you stay in my branches all winter, you will eat off all my acorns. Disappointed, the little bird went to a willow tree and asked to help. But it said, I never talk to strangers. Go away! The poor little bird didn't know where to go or what to do next. And so he hopped and fluttered along with his broken wing, 
passed a spruce tree. Now the spruce tree was feeling very sorry for the little bird and said, You may live in one of my branches. Here, this one is the warmest of them all. Next to the spruce tree was a pine tree which overheard the conversation and said, My branches are not very warm enough, but I will keep you, the wind away from you, because I am big and strong. I am big and strong. Behind the pine tree was a juniper tree. It said, You can eat all my juniper berries throughout the winter. It is very good for little birds like you. It is very good for little birds like you. The little bird felt cozy and cared for in his branch, sheltered from the wind and with lots of juniper berries to eat. And with a big smile on his face, he said a big thank you to his new friends. Something to learn. That we need to respect, nurture and appreciate nature for giving us all that we need. We need to be grateful to God, the creator for creation which is beautiful and wonderful. We need to coexist with nature, care for nature. In today's gospel, we see two of John the Baptist's disciples asking Jesus, Teacher, where do you stay? Jesus said, Come and see. It was four o'clock in the afternoon. So they went with Jesus and saw where he lived. They started to live with Jesus because they discovered that Jesus is true God. Jesus is true God. What made them to be followers of Jesus? Because he spoke the truth. He was kind, compassionate, merciful, humble and obedient to God. The question is, how does Jesus stay with us? The question is, how does Jesus stay with us? One. Jesus stays with us when we participate in an online mass or go together as a family to church, eating together and pray as a family asking for our daily needs. Two. Jesus stays with us when we don't hurt our parents, our own brother, our sister, our friends by being nice with them. 3. Jesus stays with us when mummy or daddy correct us, not to get angry often, not to tell lies, respect elders. All these are told for us to grow and be a good child. 4. Jesus stays with us when we listen to our teachers, who teach us good values to be responsible. In doing small things like cleaning your room, helping mama and dad, helping your classmates at school, doing your homework. 5. Jesus stays with us because he loves you the most. He takes care of your needs through your parents, grandparents or relatives. Always remember to thank Jesus for blessing you and your family. 6. Jesus stays with us when we help those in need of food, money or shelter. What we have learned today that when we are kind, compassionate, obey and love our parents, siblings, friends and neighbours, Jesus stays with us. It's our duty to follow Jesus each and every day. Amen. Now let us together profess our faith by saying the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, 
consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us confidently turn to God, the giver of all life and peace, for all our needs and those of the world. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop William, all priests and clergy, that like Eli, who guided the child Samuel, may they give the teaching, advice and help, which leads us to the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents and teachers, that by their word and actions, they may help our children find the Lamb of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all suffering from the resurgence of the coronavirus, particularly those in intensive care, unable to see or be with their loved ones, that they experience God's solace and compassion through the dedicated care of the doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For more vocations to the priesthood and the religious life, that like Samuel, all baptized Catholics will be faithful to their call to follow Christ, especially those chosen for the unique consecration of priesthood or religious life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace and reconciliation in the United States at this time of change and uncertainty, that differences can be reconciled peacefully. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold silently in our hearts, in those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, every good gift comes from you. We trust you, you will hear our prayers and grant us every grace we need to serve you faithfully. We pray to Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, He humbled Himself and was born of the Virgin. By the Passion of the Cross, He freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, He gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and then entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Alphonsus, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now let us pray together the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Dear children, I want you to close your eyes for a moment. And think about Jesus. Jesus loves to stay with you because He cares for you. He provides your needs. He blesses you. He has given you talents. He has blessed through your parents, through your siblings. Thank Jesus always because He loves to stay with you. He comes to us spiritually when we listen to Him, when we obey Him. Thank Jesus for protecting you, for nurturing you. Thank Him always. Remember and tell Jesus, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. We invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.
In Corinthians it says, There's one body, but it has many parts. But all its many parts make up one body. We are all part of one church, regardless of our parish, ministry, or the groups we are in. We are one. For we were all baptized by one spirit, clergy and laity, all co-responsible for the mission of the church. Like unleavened bread, we are all molded together by the same spirit to form one body. Like the many who came before us, each part called to a life of sacrifice. Each one of us is blessed with various gifts and talents to share freely, to reach out, love and support one another generously. Just like bread blessed and broken, our lives and the work of our hands are consecrated to be the living body of Christ to be given and shared with all, to be a light to the world. We, His living body, are called to build strong evangelizing families, to strengthen the fabric of the church, to raise a generation of young people passionately in love with Jesus, to continue to form the faith of generations and mold the future through Catholic education. We are to care for our elders and shepherds who have cared for us, to grow and sustain our places of worship and infrastructures, and to encounter Jesus, be in communion with one another, and be his witnesses to the world. We are the living body of Christ. Each one of us is a part of it. Together as one, we reflect Him. Let us each strive to be vibrant, evangelizing and missionary Christians in our families, with our friends and in our communities. Let us respond as one body of Christ be givers of our time, talent, and treasures. Let us pray, act, and give to build the church today for tomorrow. Our church has gone through many milestones in her life. And there is much to be thankful for as we look back on the many sacrifices that were made to build the church that we have today. As our church strives to continue to rise above the current, may our hearts burn with love and zeal to grow and enliven the lives of the many people. Let us reignite and shine our faith by supporting our church as her mission is still very much growing and now more than ever needs your support.